بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أيها الأحباب جنة أو بارادايس is near and likewise hellfire is near so using this life as a means to bring us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to prepare for our life in the hereafter should be our main goal that the things we strive for in this life should help us get to our final ending and as the Salaf of this Ummah, the pious predecessors, radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in, used to say, Ad-dunya dar al-amal. Wal-akhira dar al jaza That this life is the time for deeds. Darul Amu. It's the place for doing deeds. And the hereafter is the time for receiving the reward. So you'll reap what you sow in the hereafter. If you did righteous deeds in this life, then be idnillah by the mercy and permission of Allah. In the hereafter, you'll have Jannah. Jannah to Firdaus, bi'idnillah. But if you did wrong and evil and you oppressed others, then in the next life, you'll receive the reward for that. And that is Nar, the hellfire. Wa'iyadhan billah min dhalika. And the people of paradise are the Faizin or Faizun. They're the people who are successful. And the people of the hellfire are the Khasirun. Those are the people who are the losers. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by the time, Wal Asr, Inna Linsana Lafi Khusr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, by the time, verily mankind is in a loss. Inna l'insana lafi khusr. Verily, mankind is in a loss. Mankind, all of mankind, in reference to that ayat. Then after that ayat, the next verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, gives us the istathna. He gives us the exception. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Except those who believe. Except those who have faith. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمَلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ And they do righteous deeds. وَتَوَاصُوا بِالْحَقِ And they call to the haq. وَتَوَاصُوا بِالصَّبْرِ And they are patient. أَيُّ الْأَحْبَاب do the deeds that are going to benefit you in this life. And this is advice first and foremost to myself. An ibn Mas'ud radiyallahu ta'ala anhu qal Qala nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Al jannatu aqrabu ila ahadikum min shiraq al-ni'lihi Wa naru mithla thalik Ruahu Bukhari In this hadith that was narrated uh, that was reported by Ibn uh, Mas'ud radiyallahu ta'ala anhu and collected in Bukhari rahimahullah imam Bukhari in which the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said paradise is nearer to any one of you than your shoelace and likewise is the hellfire ayul ahbab Going to paradise or hell is the result of one's actions and both are close to everyone.
meaning paradise and hellfire, are both near to us, that this life is so quick. Depending on the length of time that you've lived in this life, you'll realize if you're 20 years old, it was yesterday you were 10. You can remember that. If you're now 50, you remember when you were graduating from high school and maybe some of the struggles you went through at that time period and how the time cannot be accounted for, how it just flew. Likewise, our time in this life will be like that. It is like that. We're, we're speaking about this issue now, but some of us may be on our beds, may or may not reflect upon this, but that's just tomorrow. Tomorrow is a time all of us will be held accountable. All of us will face death. We'll forget all the things we strove for in this life. Some of us wanted to, to uh, marry the most beautiful woman. Some of us wanted to collect the most money and, and save up for this and strive for this. Some of us wanted to increase our collection of different items that we strive to collect. Some of us wanted four cars, you know, the most beautiful cars. Some of us wanted the nicest shoes and the nicest clothes, but all of those things will come in and out of fashion. All of those things will will uh, have little time and they expire in this life. And likewise, we expire. And likewise, we will come to the end of our life very shortly, very shortly. So use your time wisely. Use it to do righteous deeds. And after death, one's entitlement for Jannah or hell will be decided. Meaning that after death, as we mentioned, there's no more deeds for you. And as the Prophet sallallahu said in his authentic hadith in Sahih Muslim, إِذَا مَاتَ مَرْعِي إِنْ كَتَعَ عَمَلْهُ إِلَّا مِنْ ثَلَاثِ That when a person dies, his deeds are cut off except three. Sadaqa jariya. The continuous charity. So if someone does charity on your behalf or you left behind some charitable, continual charitable uh, donation, something that will benefit people after you have died, then you'll receive reward for that in the grave. Sadaqa jariya. Wa ilm. Wa ilm yantafa' bi. Or yuntafa' bi. And knowledge that is benefited from. So if you have some Islamic knowledge that you left behind, you wrote books, you left students, something, that they continue to benefit from your knowledge and then you will receive reward for that even in the grave. And the third one is a righteous child that supplicates for him, seeks forgiveness for, 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 for you. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy upon you. Asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you with Jannah, Jannah to Firdaus. Those are the only three things that are going to be left after you've deceased. Because as we mentioned, your family, your wealth, all of those things will be gone. They'll leave your grave and have to continue on with their life. And you might be a something, someone they remember. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us to be of those who do righteous deeds in this life and who receive the reward of those righteous deeds in the next life. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with Jannah Tafardos and forgive us of our many sins and bless the Muslims everywhere and grant the Muslims everywhere success and forgiveness and guidance and relief from their various trials and tribulations. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.